Sam Clayton adjusted his cap and wiped the sweat from his brow as he trekked through the dense forest. The late afternoon sun cast long shadows, creating an eerie stillness in the woods. His survival skills had led him deep into these untamed parts of British Columbia, a place where he often found solace and escape from his turbulent past. As he climbed a rocky incline, a deafening crash echoed through the trees, followed by a shockwave that nearly knocked him off his feet. Curiosity and concern propelled Sam toward the source of the disturbance. Navigating through the underbrush with practiced ease, he soon arrived at a scene of utter devastation. Trees were uprooted, and the ground was scorched. In the center of the chaos lay a sleek, otherworldly craft, partially embedded in the earth. Smoke and sparks emanated from its damaged hull. Cautiously, Sam approached the wreckage. His heart pounded as he noticed a figure trapped beneath a large piece of debris. It was unlike anything he had ever seen. An alien, with bioluminescent skin and large, expressive eyes that glowed faintly even in daylight. The creature's delicate features were contorted in pain, and it struggled to free itself. Sam hesitated for a moment, then steeled himself and moved closer. Hang on, I'll get you out, he said, more to himself than to the alien. Using a fallen branch as leverage, he managed to lift the debris just enough to drag the injured being free. The alien groaned softly as Sam gently laid it on the ground. The creature's eyes opened, and it spoke in a strange, melodic language. A small device around its neck emitted a series of clicks and whirs before translating, Help me! Please, Sam's survival instincts kicked in. He pulled out his first aid kit and started tending to the alien's wounds, which oozed a luminous, blue fluid. I don't know what you are or where you came from, but you're in rough shape, he murmured. As he worked, the alien Naira, she called herself, explained her mission. Her home planet was dying, and she had been sent to seek aid from Earth, only to crash land in this unfamiliar, hostile environment. She spoke of her world with a mix of hope and desperation, painting a picture of a place on the brink of extinction, yet full of beauty and life. Sam's mind raced as he listened. He couldn't help but feel a surge of protectiveness toward Naira. Her vulnerability was stark against the harsh backdrop of the forest, and he knew that Earth, with its myriad dangers, was no place for her. Their conversation was abruptly cut short by the distant sound of helicopters. Sam's stomach tightened. He knew what that meant government forces, likely the GEDF, a shadowy organization rumored to deal with extraterrestrial matters. They were efficient, ruthless, and would stop at nothing to capture Naira. We have to move now, Sam urged, helping Naira to her feet. Despite her obvious pain, she nodded and clung to his arm for support. They plunged into the forest, Sam leading the way through a series of hidden paths he knew well. The sound of helicopters grew louder, searchlights piercing through the canopy as they scoured the area. As they ran, Sam's mind flashed back to his days in the military, where evasion and survival were drilled into him. This time, however, he wasn't just saving himself. He was responsible for Naira's life, and failure was not an option. They reached a secluded cave just as the helicopters passed overhead. Inside, Sam checked Naira's wounds again. She was growing weaker, her luminous skin dimming. You need rest, he said softly. We'll stay here for the night. Naira's eyes met his, filled with gratitude and something deeper, trust. Thank you, Sam, she whispered. For everything. He nodded, feeling a strange sense of purpose he hadn't felt in years. Get some sleep. We'll figure out our next move in the morning. As Naira drifted off, Sam sat at the cave's entrance, keeping watch. His mind raced with plans and contingencies. The GDF was relentless, and they had to stay one step ahead. But for the first time in a long time, he felt a glimmer of hope. Maybe, just maybe, they could make it out of this alive. The night deepened, and the forest around them seemed to hold its breath. Sam knew this was only the beginning of a much larger ordeal, but he was ready. For Naira, for the chance to make a difference, he would fight with everything he had. Sam Clayton woke to the sound of leaves rustling. Instantly alert, he peered out of the cave's entrance, scanning the forest for any sign of movement. 
the early morning light filtered through the trees, casting a greenish hue on everything. Naira was still asleep, her bioluminescent skin faintly glowing. Sam's mind raced with plans and contingencies. He needed to keep them moving, but Naira's condition was fragile. Gently waking her, Sam explained they had to leave immediately. Naira nodded, her eyes filled with determination despite her visible exhaustion. They ventured deeper into the forest, moving cautiously and avoiding open areas. The sound of distant helicopters reminded Sam that the GDF was relentless in their pursuit. They approached a small stream, and Sam took the opportunity to refill their water supply and let Naira rest. As she drank, he thought about their next move. They needed more than just hiding places. They needed allies. An idea formed in his mind, Dr. Elena Parker, a scientist he once met who had a reputation for empathy towards extraterrestrial life. Naira, we need to find someone who can help us, Sam said. I know a scientist who might be able to assist. It's risky, but we don't have many options. Naira nodded. I trust you, Sam. Let's go. Navigating the forest, they reached the outskirts of a small town. Sam led Naira through back alleys and quiet streets until they arrived at a modest house on the edge of town. He knocked on the door, and after a tense moment, Dr. Parker opened it. Her eyes widened in shock as she saw Sam and the alien girl. Sam, what is this? Who is she? Dr. Parker asked, her voice a mix of curiosity and concern. Elena, we need your help. This is Naira. She's not from here, and she's in serious danger. The GEDF is after her, and we need to get her somewhere safe, Sam explained quickly. Dr. Parker ushered them inside, glancing nervously around before closing the door. All right, tell me everything. As they sat in the living room, Sam and Naira recounted their ordeal. Dr. Parker listened intently, her scientific curiosity piqued by Naira's story. She examined Naira's injuries with a gentle touch, noting the unusual bioluminescence and advanced healing rate. You're lucky to have found me, Dr. Parker said. I've suspected for a long time that the GDF was hiding something like this. We need to act fast. They'll be looking for you. She led them to a basement laboratory filled with various scientific instruments and computer screens. Dr. Parker began running tests on Naira, working quickly but efficiently. Sam watched, feeling a mix of hope and anxiety. He trusted Dr. Parker, but the clock was ticking. Hours passed, and the tests revealed that Naira's physiology was indeed highly sensitive to Earth's environment. Dr. Parker synthesized a temporary protective serum to help stabilize Naira's condition. This should buy us some time, Dr. Parker said injecting the serum into Naira's arm. But it's not a permanent solution. We need to get her off this planet. Suddenly, the sound of a door crashing open upstairs echoed through the house. Heavy footsteps followed. The GDF had found them. Hide her, Dr. Parker whispered urgently. Sam and Naira scrambled to a hidden compartment beneath the floorboards. Through the small cracks, they could see Dr. Parker standing firm as GDF agents stormed in. Where is she? demanded the lead agent, his tone menacing. Dr. Parker, her face calm, replied, I don't know who you're talking about. The agent sneered. Don't play games with us, doctor. We know she was here. As the agents ransacked the laboratory, Sam held his breath, ready to fight if necessary. Naira gripped his arm, her fear palpable. They had to remain hidden at least until the agents left. Minutes felt like hours, but eventually, the agents grew frustrated and left, warning Dr. Parker they would return. Once the house was silent, Sam and Naira emerged from their hiding spot. Dr. Parker looked shaken but determined. We can't stay here, she said. We need to move her to a safer location. Sam nodded. I know a place in the mountains far from here. They won't find us there. Gathering what supplies they could, the trio set off under the cover of darkness. Sam led them through a series of hidden paths, his knowledge of the terrain once again proving invaluable. As they reached a secluded cabin nestled in the mountains, Sam felt a brief sense of relief. We'll be safe here for now, he said, looking at Naira and Dr. Parker. But we need to figure out our next steps. Naira, 
her strength slowly returning, smiled weakly. Thank you, both of you. I don't know what I would do without your help. Dr. Parker placed a reassuring hand on Naira's shoulder. We'll find a way to get you home, Naira. I promise. Sam, Naira, and Dr. Parker settled into the mountain cabin, each weighed down by the urgency of their situation. Sam maintained a vigilant watch, his eyes scanning the dark forest outside. The secluded location provided a temporary sanctuary, but they all knew it was only a matter of time before the GEDF found them again. Naira's condition had improved slightly with the serum Dr. Parker had administered, but she remained weak. Sam watched her closely, noticing the way her bioluminescent skin flickered when she was stressed or frightened. He knew they needed a more permanent solution to protect her from Earth's harsh environment. The next morning, Sam and Dr. Parker discussed their options. We need to get Naira to a safer place, somewhere the GEDF can't reach her, Sam said, his voice steady with resolve. Dr. Parker nodded. There's an old lab facility deep in the mountains. It's abandoned now, but it has the equipment we need to help Naira. I can modify the serum to make it more effective and buy us more time. Naira, overhearing their conversation, approached them. Thank you both. I don't know how I can ever repay you. Sam shook his head. We're in this together. We'll get you home. They packed their supplies and set off at first light, navigating the rugged terrain with caution. The journey was grueling, but Sam's experience as a survival expert proved invaluable. He guided them through dense forests, over rocky cliffs, and across fast-flowing rivers, always staying one step ahead of the GDF. As they neared the abandoned facility, a sense of unease settled over the group. The building loomed ahead, a relic of a bygone era. Dr. Parker led them inside, her knowledge of the layout guiding them to a hidden lab beneath the main structure. The lab was dusty and filled with outdated equipment, but it had the basics they needed. Dr. Parker quickly got to work, synthesizing a more potent version of the serum. Sam and Naira stood watch, their eyes and ears attuned to any signs of danger. Hours passed, and tension hung heavy in the air. Suddenly, the sound of boots crunching on gravel echoed through the halls. The GEDF had found them. Sam motioned for silence and gestured for Naira to hide behind a large console. He positioned himself at the entrance, ready to defend their position. Dr. Parker continued her work, her hands steady despite the imminent threat. The serum was almost ready, but they needed more time. Sam's heart pounded as he heard the agents approaching. He knew they wouldn't stand a chance in a direct confrontation. The lead agent's voice rang out, We know you're in here. Surrender now, and no one gets hurt. Sam gripped his makeshift weapon, a metal pipe he had found in the lab. He glanced at Naira, who looked back with a mixture of fear and determination. They wouldn't go down without a fight. The agents entered the lab, their flashlights cutting through the darkness. Sam waited, his muscles coiled like a spring. Just as the first agent stepped into the room, Dr. Parker finished the serum and handed it to Naira. Go! She whispered urgently. Naira injected herself with the serum, her skin glowing brighter as it took effect. Sam lunged at the agent, striking with the pipe and knocking him unconscious. The other agents opened fire, but Naira's enhanced abilities allowed her to move with incredible speed. She dodged the bullets and disarmed the agents with a grace and strength that took them by surprise. Dr. Parker joined the fray, using her knowledge of the lab to her advantage. She activated an old security system, locking the remaining agents in a containment room. The battle was brief but intense, leaving Sam, Naira, and Dr. Parker breathing heavily but victorious. We need to move now, Sam urged. They grabbed their supplies and fled the facility, disappearing into the dense forest once again. As they ran, Sam felt a surge of hope. Naira's newfound strength gave them an edge, but they still had a long journey ahead. They reached a hidden cave as night fell, taking refuge in its depths. Naira's glow provided a soft light, illuminating their exhausted faces. Sam looked at her, his eyes filled with determination. We're getting closer, he said. We'll find a way to get you home. Naira nodded, her expression resolute. I believe in us. 
As they settled in for the night, the weight of their situation pressed down on them. The GEDF would not stop hunting them, but they had each other and a shared goal. Together, they would face whatever came next. The following morning, Sam, Naira, and Dr. Parker woke to the sound of distant birds, a stark contrast to the danger that lurked just beyond their mountain sanctuary. They knew they couldn't stay hidden forever. Sam gathered the group, his face set with determination. Naira, we need to get you back to your people, Sam said. Staying here only puts us all at risk. Naira nodded. I understand. But how do we reach them? Dr. Parker chimed in. There's an old communication outpost not far from here. If we can activate the transmitter, we can send a signal to Naira's home planet. It's our best shot. They quickly packed their essentials and set off. The path to the outpost was rugged, but Sam's expertise in navigation ensured they moved swiftly and silently. The tension in the group was palpable, each step bringing them closer to potential salvation or capture. As they neared the outpost, Sam scouted ahead. The structure was dilapidated, its rusted frame a testament to years of neglect. Inside, cobwebs hung from the ceiling and dust coated the old equipment. Dr. Parker immediately set to work, her fingers flying over the controls as she attempted to power up the transmitter. Naira watched with a mixture of hope and fear. Do you think it will work? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. It has to, Dr. Parker replied. We don't have another option. Minutes stretched into hours as Dr. Parker fought to coax the ancient technology back to life. Finally, with a triumphant smile, she declared, It's working! Naira stepped forward, activating her translator device. This is Naira of the planet Eloria. I am stranded on Earth and require immediate assistance. Coordinates to follow. She input the coordinates, and the message was sent into the void of space. The group barely had time to breathe a sigh of relief before the sound of engines shattered the silence. The GEDF had tracked them. Sam's heart sank as he saw the black vehicles approaching. We need to hold them off until Naira's people arrive, he said, steeling himself for the inevitable confrontation. The GEDF agents stormed the outpost, but Sam, Naira, and Dr. Parker were ready. They had barricaded the entrance and taken strategic positions. Sam's military training came to the forefront as he directed their defense, using the environment to their advantage. Dr. Parker, though not a fighter, proved invaluable by using the old equipment to create distractions and obstacles. Naira, her strength bolstered by the serum, moved with agility, evading capture and assisting where she could. Despite their efforts, the agents began to overwhelm them. Just as all seemed lost, a bright light filled the sky. A sleek, advanced spacecraft descended, its engines humming with power. Naira's people had arrived. The Elorian ship deployed a defensive barrier, repelling the GEDF agents. A group of Elorians emerged, their appearance strikingly similar to Naira's. They quickly assessed the situation and moved to assist Sam, Naira, and Dr. Parker. Naira ran to them, her relief evident. I knew you would come, she said, her voice breaking with emotion. One of the Elorians, a tall figure with an air of authority, approached Sam and Dr. Parker. Thank you for protecting Naira. We owe you a great debt, he said. Sam nodded, his face grim. We did what we had to do, but you need to take her home, where she'll be safe. Naira turned to Sam and Dr. Parker, her eyes filled with gratitude. I don't have the words to express my thanks. You saved my life, and I will never forget it. Dr. Parker smiled warmly. Take care of yourself, Naira. And maybe one day, our worlds will meet again under better circumstances. As Naira and the Elorians prepared to depart, Sam felt a pang of sadness. Despite the brief time they had spent together, Naira had become like family. Goodbye, Naira. Stay safe, he said softly. The Elorian ship lifted off, its engines whirring as it ascended into the sky. Sam and Dr. Parker watched until it was just a speck in the distance. The GDF agents, now subdued and retreating, knew they had lost this battle. Sam turned to Dr. Parker, a determined look on his face. We've done something good here today, but there's more out there. 
More beings who need our help. Dr. Parker nodded. I'm with you, Sam. Wherever this path leads, I'm ready. As they made their way back to the mountain cabin, Sam felt a renewed sense of purpose. They had protected Naira, and in doing so, had taken the first steps toward a future where humans and extraterrestrials could coexist peacefully. They were prepared to fight for a better tomorrow.